Welcome to the Morning Manna Podcast. I'm Greg Fadna, so glad that you're with me. We are going through the Psalms, and uh, last week we made it, oh, about halfway through Psalm 9. Psalm 9 is a Psalm of David and uh, another Psalm where he finds himself in trouble, circumstantial difficulty in his life. And and so we're learning um, through David's uh, reactions to his circumstances and seeking the Lord and, and so on, how we ought to react when times of trouble come our way. And they will. In the world, you shall have tribulation, Jesus promised. Mm-hmm. And we love to put that on our coffee mugs and on the refrigerators, right? <laughs> As a promise of God. We, we don't um, typically, do we? But it's a good reminder. Because, listen, Christian, Trouble is going to shape you. Affliction is going to purify you. Uh, you know, trials are going to mature us. And that's just the facts in, uh, in the Christian life. The Lord uses that stuff um, so powerfully to move us along uh, in our journey with him. So Psalm 9, we'll pick it up. And we've just been pulling out some you know, some some sort of truths to hang our hats on. So last week we said, uh, in trouble we praise him. Um, We give glory to him. We partner in battle with him. We trust him. And then fifthly, and this is new territory, we run to him. We run to him in times of trouble. This is important. Verse 9. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So times of trouble, times of extremity, where life, it just seems like it's going off the rails and it's out of control. That's when we run to the Lord. Because we know that God is in control. We know that by faith, even if circum- circumstances are screaming at us to freak out and, you know, and so on. So running to the Lord, our stronghold. What's a stronghold? Well, just as it sounds, strong, safe place, a place of shelter, a place where we are protected, where we are cared for. That's who the Lord is. And so when trouble comes, and it will, we run to the stronghold, Jesus, who will enfold us in his protective care. But next, not only do we run to him, but then we promote him or we exalt him, we might say. Verse 11, sing praises to the Lord who sits enthroned in Zion. Tell among the peoples his deeds, for he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. So so tell among the people his deeds. Talk to people about the Lord and what he's done for you, how he delivered you out of this challenge or that trial, or how you are confident that he's going to deliver you out of the trial that you find yourself in now. Tell people that you are confident in the Lord and he is trustworthy and he is good. When people see you trusting the Lord in your midnight hour, they, they see the reality of Jesus in your life. You know, when, when everything is just hunky-dory and life is just no problems and you're just sailing along, I, I think those are the times when the presence of Jesus isn't so evident to others coming from our lives. But I'll tell you what, it's in the midnight hour when things are going south and things are not good circumstantially, but you're praising him right in the middle of it. And you're singing to the Lord and you're thanking him. People will see that. You remember what happened with Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail? They were put in stocks, their feet in their hands, fastened to the walls. They were beaten and they're just, you know, fastened to the walls of that stinky, Mamertine jail there in Philippi, and it was midnight, 
And what were they doing? They were singing hymns to Jesus. They were worshiping the Lord. In Acts 16, the Bible says that an earthquake came and shook the prison cell uh, doors open and the jailer awoke out of his sleep and thought that everybody had escaped. And when they hadn't, the, the prisoners, you know, didn't run. Um, he threw himself at the feet of Paul and Silas and said, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household, and you shall be saved. Listen, it's powerful when, um, when we worship the Lord in, in, the, in the, the midnight hour, the, the time of testing. It's, it's, a, it's a revelation of true faith to the people who are watching, and they're watching. I mean, there's people in prisons all around us, metaphorically speaking, all around us that are looking at our lives. So we promote him, says David. And next, we pour out our heart to him. When trouble comes, we pour out our heart to him. Verse 13, be gracious to me, O Lord. See my affliction from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises, that in the gates of the daughters of Zion I may rejoice in your salvation. So, so be gracious to me, the Lord, and, and see what's going on here. Look at those who hate me. So David's just being honest. God, do, do you see what's happening here? Do you see these people who are talking about me, these people who are scheming against me? And he's, he's just pouring out the contents of his heart to God. But next, we, we are confident in him. In our time of trouble, we put our confidence in him. Verse 15, the nations have sunk in the pit that they made, in the net that they hid. Their own foot has been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. So I love this. So, so David is saying this, I think, prophetically. He's predicting it. So he's still, you know, in the midst of the trouble, but he's saying th this is the way it's going to go down ultimately because I know God and I, I have my, the, the utmost confidence in the Lord. And that's the way it needs to be, folks. We, when trouble comes, we, we shouldn't place our trust in man or in the circumstances. It should be firmly and squarely in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, um, let's see here. Next, we, we hope in him. We hope in him, and that's verse 17. The wicked shall return to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. So keep that in mind, the, the you know, ultimate destinations uh, important to keep in mind. But verse 18, for the needy shall not always be forgotten and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. So the needy and the poor. So David is not just referencing, you know, those who um, uh, are materially poor, but he's, he's talking about those who are ex like he is at this moment of the psalm. Um, on the outs with the rest of the world, experiencing trouble and so on. What did Jesus say in the Sermon on the Mount? Blessed are the poor in spirit, right? Blessed. There's a blessedness to embracing our poverty of spirit. And we shall inherit the earth and so those who are first shall be last. Those who are last shall be first. It's the upside down nature of God's kingdom. In this world, it's flipped upside down. But listen, Christian, and, and you may have some success in this life or not, but if you are on the lowest of the low in our culture and society, take, uh, take courage because you are in a very esteemed position in God's kingdom. You are a 
co-heir with Jesus Christ of all things. And your reward is coming, and it's coming soon. Well, lastly, David says um, that we are in trouble. We are to be in awe of him, in awe of the Lord. Verse 19, Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are but men. <laughs> I love that. Let them know, would you, God, that you're the one to be feared, that you're the one who is awesome. Listen, the Lord will put his fear in the nations. We've been going through the book of Revelation in our, in our church on Sunday mornings, and one thing is, is certain is that the people of planet Earth, the powerful people, the influencers and those who deny God and rebel against God, they will have the fear of God put in them, guaranteed that day is coming. But how wise it is to fear the Lord now, to open up your heart, to bend your knee, to submit your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord, and then to live in light of who he is and not worry about what anyone may do to you. The Lord's got you. He's your stronghold. Hey, God bless you.